tonight on Cronkite News. The final four is set for this weekend. We talk about the teams and the setup at State Farm Stadium. And security at the final four is on the minds of many. Find out how law enforcement is preparing for the big event. Plus, one of Arizona's most decorated athletes returned home for the chance to return to the top. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Ethan Tuttle. And I'm Tia Reed. Thank you for joining us. Well, it was another weekend of madness for NCAA basketball, and we now have the final four, Tia. Yeah, UConn, Purdue, Alabama, and NC State are all on their way to Phoenix. And Nate Oates, Alabama's head coach, has taken a very interesting path to the Final Four. He was a high school basketball coach in Michigan for 11 years before taking an assistant coaching position at Buffalo under Bobby Hurley, who of course is now the current head coach at Arizona State. Now Oates takes on takes on Bobby's brother Danny and the number one overall seed UConn Huskies in the Final Four. After the Crimson Tide's Elite Eight win over Clemson, Oates shared his gratitude to the Hurley family for helping start his college coaching career. It's surreal. You go back 11 years ago, and I was won a state championship at Rhymeness High back in Detroit area. So it hasn't been that long. And, you know, Bobby Hurley gives me a chance. You know, and obviously the Hurley family's got a lot of respect for high school coaches. Their dad's a Hall of Fame coach, and I'm in the Final Four and I get to go against, you know, Danny, who helped get me in this thing. Well, you know, obviously Bobby's the one who hired me, but two of those guys kind of came into college together and have been great to me the whole time. Oates said it probably won't hit him that he's in the Final Four until after the season is over. But now he has to crack the winning formula of the Huskies who beat Illinois by over 30 points to reach the final four. We've defied the odds this year, you know, just with past champions and losing everything that we lost from last year's team and having this giant target that we've carried the entire year. The UConn target plus the defending national champs target. Our fan base and our, and our organization right now, it's an us against the, the world of college, of college basketball. The men's Final Four is now just a few days away as the teams compete for a national championship at State Farm Stadium, which of course is a football stadium and that can present some unique challenges. It's a team effort to change a football stadium into a basketball one, but it's something State Farm Stadium is familiar with. Just like this year, the 2017 men's Final Four was in Glendale with Arizona State as the event's host school. It takes hundreds of volunteers, staff and contractors to achieve this process, which is said to take about a month to plan out and execute. Now, the stadium is all set for the big weekend. It's exciting. You know, we're fortunate to be able to host the Super Bowl last year and then the following year to have the Final Four. Uh, those are the two biggest events you could have. And so um, I think we've got the best staff in the world as, as far as the stadium is concerned in being able to successfully put these events on. The NCAA is as good as it gets when it comes to um, knowing what they want and what it takes to make an event an outstanding experience. This past Friday, ESPN and top-ranked boxing featured a junior lightweight showdown between Oscar Valdez and Liam Wilson right here in Arizona. Yeah, that's right. This fight meant a lot to both challengers, but for Oscar Valdez, Arizona was more than just a location for the fight. Our reporter Dorian Zavala spoke to Valdez before his big fight. The Valley has produced many world-class athletes. For world boxing champ Oscar Valdez, it's no different. Valdez was born in Nogales, Mexico, but grew up in Tucson and knows how special it is to fight in his adoptive home state. Man, it's my house. It's my home. You know, I was born in Nogales, but I did my elementary school here in Tucson, Arizona. And, you know, made a lot of great friends. A lot of my, most family members are still here in Tucson, Arizona. And, you know, I just got a great relationship. The border of Nogales, Mexico and Tucson, Arizona introduced Valdez to not only boxing, but to his sporting idols. Being born, you know, being on the border side, you know, from Tucson and Nogales, you know, there's a lot of boxing involved. It's, um, it's a combination for both sides, man, and we just loved it. Mexico has a rich and deep passion for boxing, and the sport is entwined with the Mexican culture that has seeped its way into the valley. One of the highest recognitions a fan can give a Mexican boxer is the title of Guerrero, or warrior, and they don't give that title to just anybody. Boxing, is, uh, boxing fans can be a little cruel, they're the hardest to convince sometimes. And you can have speed, you can have strength, you can have stamina. But if you don't got that last check mark, that last, you know, last being called a warrior, 
Well, in my eyes, you're, you're just an okay fighter. Valdez earned that last moniker during a fight earlier in his career where he broke his job but got the victory. That is when fans started to truly acknowledge Valdez as one of those warriors. But Valdez wouldn't check off all those boxes if it wasn't for his time in Arizona. And now fighting in front of his family, friends, team, and loved ones in Glendale gives him even more strength. My family members here, my grandmother is here, my grandfather, my father's in my corner, my mother, my brothers and sisters, and a lot of friends from back in elementary school. So it's it just, for me, it's, it adds to it, it adds to it. For someone like Valdez, who's already accomplished so much in the sport of boxing, just what is left for the former champion and two-time Olympian? Simply teach the sweet science to the next generation of Arizona boxers. Well, it was great seeing these kids in that boxing gym because I saw myself and then. The thing that I've told a lot of these kids is, look for the dream, not the money. So if I can inspire the new generation, like the way my idols inspire me, I will always try to do it. Inspiring kids to stay away from the streets is something Valdez feels strongly about and will continue to pass along that message as long as he can. In Glendale, Arizona, Dorian Zavala, Cronkite News. Valdez was victorious over Wilson, scoring a technical knockout win in the seventh round, capturing the WBO interim junior lightweight belt and moving his professional record to 30-2. and two. Also this past weekend was one to remember for ASU Swimming as they captured their first ever NCAA team title. They came into the championships ranked number one and defended that ranking in Indianapolis. The Sun Devils won with a score of 523 and a half points, beating out Cal Berkeley by 79. Throughout the four-day competition, the Sun Devils won seven events and broke nine school records. The team was powered by superstar Leon Marchand, who won three individual titles at the championship, moving his total all-time to eight NCAA titles, the most of any Sun Devil. And this just in, Arizona State Swimming head coach Bob Bowman just announced that he is leaving the Valley and going to the University of Texas to be their new director of swimming and diving. ASU announced that Herbie Bame will fill the vacant head coach position for Sun Devil Swim. In Tempe, ASU spring football is back for a Sun Devils team that looks to bounce back from a second consecutive 3-9 season. As Wilder Adams reports, the offense will be a big factor to monitor in these practices. Spring football is back for the Sun Devils, which gives the team a blank canvas to move forward with on the offensive end. The offense took a major step back last year as the team only scored 17.8 points per game and threw for eight touchdown passes. Coach Dillingham believes the first step to elevate the offense is to focus on the X's and O's this camp. In fall, you're worried about making sure all the schemes are in and you're really dialed in. Right now, you know, the, the things that win games and the things that win games are details and effort. If you do the details and you give great effort, and I think we have a talented enough ro roster to win games. Quarterback Jaden Rashada will not practice with the team at spring camp as he continues to recover from thumb surgery. New offensive coordinator Marcus Arroyo wants the active quarterbacks to set the tone for the offense in his absence. They're learning right now the offense, and so it's the ability to communicate and be able to know naturally what they're going to do in progressions, be able to know where guys are supposed to go. Um, be smart in situational football, fun, fundamental approach right away in the early onset of learning the system is probably the most important piece. As the offense looks to obtain its overall offensive identity, a big priority is allowing the running game to open up the passing game. You really, you know, we're trying to play chess this year. If we can be physical up front and run the ball and make those linebackers suck up, the play action passes will be there. You know, last year it was tough to, you know, have a run game with, we had a lot of injuries up front and, and backs were, you know, interchangeable, you know, every game. But if we can really establish a run game, that's really going to put a defense in a bind. Through the emphasis of offensive creativity, the ambition is to maximize the running backs in hopes to generate more big plays. If you look at the teams who win football games, they have more explosive plays than the teams that don't win football games. So whatever you're good at, like optimize it, become a lead at it, pour into that factor. And Scott is great with the ball in his hand running. What does he need to do? He needs to then separate with speed. So we, we challenge that. A lot rides on how this offense develops throughout camp. In Tempe, Wilder Adams, Cronkite News. The offense tapping into its potential would go a long way in helping the team get on the right track for this season. Coming up next, one GCU softball player who has been turning heads all season. We fill you in on how her impact is not just on the field. Plus, it's been a wet few days here in the Valley. Our clear skies and our future, your forecast is next. What Concrete News means to me is opportunity.
We do news right at Cronkite News, serving a community ethically, honestly, and truthfully. And we can provide a necessarily different angle, different voice for those people that really need it. The students, they have a lot of passion for journalism. I get to do a lot of stories about the Hispanic community. And we have access to cover all of these sorts of events and get media coverage of all these different personalities and athletes, and that's just a huge thing. But it's also a chance for people here to be humanized. Individuals of all walks of life. Cronkite News will help take the next generation of journalists onto their next careers. I am old enough to remember Walter Cronkite. We're putting a lot of pride on his name because we are practicing a lot of the, the things that he did. I think he'd be smiling from ear to ear. I. 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 We are Cronkite. At Cronkite News, learn to work behind the camera for studio production. Our students spend time learning the ins and outs of all that it takes to run a newscast. From setting up the studio to building exciting graphics, studio production provides a job for everyone. Whether it be running audio, technical directing, or directing the newscast, students can experience the action behind the scenes. Join our team today. Find out what's on Arizona PBS at azpbs.org schedule. The GCU softball team currently sits at 30 and 8, thanks in large part to Kristen Fifield. The graduate senior already holds the school's career record in RBIs, as well as both the single season and career records for home runs. But there's much more to Fifield than home runs and base hits. And Cronkite News reporter Riley Swenson takes us outside the lines to tell us the story. After her record-breaking 2023 season, Kristen Fifield was named a Softball America preseason All-American at the beginning of this year. It's an accolade given to an individual, but Fifield will be the first to say she couldn't have done it alone. Everyone who's been a part of my journey has been like the reason why I feel like I'm where I'm at right now, and I can thank all of them for that because without them, I probably wouldn't be here right now and I probably wouldn't have been getting the awards that I've been getting. One of those people who have helped Fifield along the way is assistant coach Sidney Sherrill. The former third baseman was a three-time All-American and won a national championship at Florida State. Cheryl knows what it takes to have success and has been a mentor to Fifield at GCU. She brings a lot to the table, so just really proud of her and um, I've pushed her in a lot of ways, so really awesome to see her get this recognition and I'm um, just excited to see what she does for the team the rest of the year. Not only does Kristen shine here on the field, making her a winner in the game of softball, but she shines off the field, making her a winner in the game of life. Uh, she excels in every part of her life and, and so it's the I tell people like her that she kind of bothers me because, you know, I was just getting by trying to be a student athlete, make my grades, and she does it so easily and naturally, and that's part of what makes her a great leader. Fifield has done plenty more than just get by, as she was nominated last year for the NCAA Woman of the Year Award, which honors graduating female student athletes for their athletic and academic achievements, as well as their work in the community. Being able to be one of those female athletes has been really amazing and honored to be able to receive that and just be a part of those nominees because it's not often that that happens. Fifield is an elementary education major and her work in the classroom translates directly to the diamond. I'm kind of leading and guiding the little kids so it's just almost as like the freshmen not saying that they're little kids <laughs> but it allows me to see different areas and like how kids act and like how I can take it to the field and use that aspect, my teacher aspect, on the field. Softball and teaching runs in the family. As Fifield says, she looks up to her sister, Caitlin, who pitched at UTEP and is now a teacher herself. In Phoenix, Riley Swenson, Cronkite News. Fifield said that when she goes home to Texas where her sister teaches, she's been able to shadow Caitlin in the classroom. Well, back here in Arizona, it's been a wet and cold few days. That's right, and Snow Bowl up in Flagstaff says it received 10 inches of snow in just 24 hours. And even more snow was expected today. All that snow makes for great skiing, but it wasn't just Snow Bowl that saw a lot of the white stuff. Downtown Flagstaff also got hit, too. The National Weather Service in Flagstaff says more than 7 inches of snow fell yesterday.
Well, no snow here in the valley, but it sure was a wet weekend. That's right. Anthony Remedios joins us to tell us how long the rain will stick around. Thanks, Ethan and Tia. On a positive note, we outside of tomorrow morning, we really won't see much rain in the forecast the rest of the week. Now, starting tonight, we'll see those temperatures a little bit lower than what we're used to seeing this time of year, starting at 62 degrees by 6 o'clock, cooling off to 58 degrees by 10 o'clock tonight. Now, tomorrow morning, those lows are going to be about the same as what we've seen the last several weeks here in Arizona, mid 50s in the valley, 48 in Tucson, and you're still going to want to bundle up if you're farther up north. But during the day, we'll see those temperatures warm back up to the mid 70s here in the valley, 75 in Phoenix, 70 in Apache Junction, and in some other parts of the state, we'll even see 80 degrees near Yuma and Lake Havasu along the western border, 63 in Sedona, and a little bit cooler in Tucson at 68. Now, looking at that rain forecast, we see those showers continue throughout the evening and into the early parts of tomorrow morning. But after that, nothing the rest of the week. And as we look ahead at our full eight day forecast here, we'll see those temperatures go back to above normal by Wednesday and Thursday before another cooling trend will start on Friday with a slight chance of rain Friday night. But other than that, it should be a beautiful weekend for the NCAA men's final four this weekend. That's it for today from the Cronkite Weather Center. I'm Anthony Remedios. Back to you. I'm Leslie Chapman with a preview of your news headlines coming up next. Thousands of migrants crossing the southwest border. However, many of them are exposing themselves to danger. When we come back, our reporter has more on what dangers migrants may be facing when crossing the border. Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este van a tumbar. Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sun City Garage, to sports coverage, against the Brewers in his last outing, he went like, to news, the bill also gives parents the ability to see, and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. back to Cronkite News. I'm Leslie Chapman. Starting off with more Final Four news in the Valley, beyond the court, officials are preparing for everything from parking to police. Our reporter Denzin Cortez found out that planning for security has been in the works for more than a year. That's right, Leslie. The city of Glendale feels that they are used to hosting big events like this, with the Super Bowl being held just last year, but that doesn't mean they are taking security for granted. In a press conference today, local, state, and federal law enforcement announced they would be out enforcing for this week. Some you may see, some you may not, all in preparation for this week's Final Four games. All eyes will be on Arizona this weekend around the men's Final Four tournament. And then we also want to make sure we're creating economic impact for the tourism industry, for our restaurants, our bar owners, and then also looking at economic development on a long-term basis. The last time a Final Four came to Arizona was in 2017, where it attracted 80,000 visitors and had an economic impact of just over $324 million, according to a study by the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State. But with an event of this magnitude, officials are warning about the large crowds and traffic expected. 
We always say just be prepared to be a, a patient, right? There's a lot of people that are going to be traveling on the roadways trying to get, so be patient um, and just know that we'll be a shifting and adjusting our, our plans as, as kind of things happen. We'll be looking to kind of balance out the roadways. Police departments have implemented mandatory staffing in preparation for the large crowds, but have encouraged Arizonans to use public transportation if possible to avoid higher than normal traffic expected. Law enforcement say they consider the area around the stadium a city within a city and are encouraging the public to reach out to firefighters and law enforcement if they need any help. In the newsroom, Denzel Cortez, Cronkite News. Tomorrow is Arizona Gives Day, and while donors can give all year round, it is a tradition that has been going since 2013. There are an anticipated 1,000 nonprofits expected to participate in the virtual fundraiser. If you donate to any nonprofit on Arizona Gives Day, you could be eligible for the Arizona Qualified Charitable Tax Credit. Some of the organizations that are expected to profit include those supporting education, animal care centers, and wildland firefighters. Now to the Arizona-Mexico border, where thousands of migrants try to cross each month. Cronkite News reporter Adriana Gonzalez-Chavez saw firsthand how dangerous the journey can be. Migrants are exposed to the possibility of many dangers when they cross the southwest border, such as physical and financial extortion. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection recorded more than 189,000 migrant crossings along the southwest in the month of February, more compared to the month of January. Leadership from Border Patrol Sector, Tucson Air, and Marine Branch, and Homeland Security Investigations, along with representatives from the government of Mexico and Guatemala, emphasize that if migrants were to cross, that they take extra precautions. Uh, we'll see a lot of rescues in the mountain ranges out here, specifically the Baba Kibri mountain range. Um, it's very treacherous, uh, rugged terrain. Um, in the summertime here in southern Arizona, obviously you'll see weather temperatures get over well over 100 degrees. Officials say that the Tucson sector is the busiest along the southwest border. In Tucson, I'm Idrana Gonzalez-Chavez, Cronkite News. A school in the Valley is making a very special trip to Washington, D.C. The Los Tigres de Tolosan Mariachi Band from the Tolosan Elementary School District were invited to perform at the annual Easter Egg Roll at the White House. The students have been exploring Capitol Hill the past few days performing. Efren Casillas, who was named 2024 Arizona Teacher of the Year, directs the Arizona Mariachi Band. The White House Easter Egg Roll has been around since the 1870s and is held on the South Lawn of the White House. Yesterday, to celebrate Cesar Chavez Day, the city of Mesa honored his legacy by unveiling a plaque in his honor. The ceremony featured Andreas Chavez, CEO of the Cesar Chavez Foundation and grandson of Cesar Chavez. During the celebration, volunteers participated in a community tree planting ceremony and free books to the local Little Free Libraries. These projects were to honor the core values Cesar Chavez has, including service to others, sacrifice, and help the most needy. That's it for your Arizona headlines. I'm Leslie Chapman. Back to Ethan and Tia. Coming up next, Arizona has a new state planet, but it is not one of the seven you would think. We tell you more about the celestial body that is forever the Arizona state symbol. Find out what's on Arizona PBS at azpbs.org slash schedule. Here at the TV Production and Graphics Lab, we are behind the scenes making the news happen. Gain experience in the control room directing, teledirecting, and rolling the audio of every Cronkite News show. Run the floor and work in a professional environment, honing your skills for the future. Create graphics that will be seen by the local community on Arizona PBS. Be a part of the bloodline that makes the Cronkite News shows possible. The Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, 
social media, and producing. There's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Tapales como este van a tumbar Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology. A new state symbol was announced by Governor Katie Hobbs, but this symbol is the center of many scientific controversies. Classified as a dwarf planet, Pluto is now the official Arizona state planet. There is rich history between Arizona and Pluto as it was first discovered at Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff on February 18, 1930. Pluto was then recognized as a planet for 75 years until the International Astronomical Union classified it as a dwarf planet. That's it for Cronkite News. Thanks for joining us. And to see top Arizona stories anytime, log on to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.